Hi, everyone. That was such a warm welcome. Thank you. How's everyone doing tonight? Okay. I think we ought to do better than that because you need to show the states how APAC participates in the first time ever my selfie in Australia. So, ready? Let's see some excitement. Go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That had to be done once uh, in my life, so. Um, what are we here today? Project Felix. What is Project Felix? Um, although, you know, Michael did a great intro of me in, in terms of talking about my, a larger part of my career as a product manager for Photoshop, I've spent the last year and a half or so really focusing on getting this new product out to you guys, and this is Project Felix. Project Felix is a new application for graphic designers to create photorealistic imagery using both 2D and 3D assets without needing to be a 3D expert. In fact, we're targeting professional graphic designers who know Photoshop and Illustrator quite well, and then we're, thinking, we're redefining these key workflows and thinking about how 3D can add value to it and ultimately make you more efficient and more creative. So, back to my clicker here, time for my pocket. Project Felix enables you to create images like this. Images that look real, but in fact are completely uh, computer generated. In fact, this particular image was all the objects, shapes, uh, et cetera, were brought in by Adobe Stock. On, uh, Adobe Stock Assets has three new asset types that are catered towards the Project Felix workflows. And these were all downloaded and composited together and placed uh, with a photographic background image. And in fact, the light source is from this photo pho photograph so that everything looks like it actually belongs together. Project Felix will also enable you to create images like this. This is important for pre-visualizations of packaging or design, really important for our designers. I've, heard, I've talked to a lot of you guys about this in terms of how problematic some of these workflows or how, how time-consuming some of these workflows can be. You know, from taking these objects, sometimes they don't even exist yet, and you have to kind of mock them up or buy them from Amazon, download them, make the logo, paste them onto the objects, position them, do photo shoots, reshoots, lighting, getting all the lighting to work, hours and hours of compositing. These things take time, and this is the exact type of workflow that Project Felix aims to streamline, making it more efficient. This is one of the key things we're focusing on in the early days. It's also important that I hear from you guys that it's not, in, not just realism in terms of how a material will look, so how paper looks here, how that logo looks like on that object, does it look real, but it's also important realism in terms of how, what the context is, right? Where, where are you going to be presenting this, how are you going to be presenting this, how people are going to be using the product, how are you going to be selling the product, ultimately to help you really better communicate your idea. So it's not, realism is really important, but sometimes you want to use that to actually create the unreal, right? To be able to, you know, not only have ice look like ice, real ice, but you want that ice cream truck to be an ice block and be melting and have that look real. We know that's not real, but we want it to look real. And that's really where Project Felix becomes fun. It's that creative play of being able to realize those imaginations into your creations, um, and that's Project Felix. So let's look at a demo. So here we are in Project Felix, and I, I want to mention that it is available today for everybody. If you go to your Creative Cloud application, you can open that link. I have my Wi-Fi turned off, and you'll see Project Felix listed there, so anybody can try it today. So on the left-hand side of Project Felix, we have all our assets. We have a starter kit that essentially has some content that you can use to get started quickly. We also have hundreds of models, um, materials that you use on your models, as well as light sources, and of course images and some of the other assets that are supported. Um, there's a bunch in the application, but there's also hundreds of these on stock, and many of them are available for free. So let me just go ahead and start a project. Say I'm working on this you know, Infinity logo, and I'm, I want to create a sculpture, and I want to show a client how this is going to look in real life. Okay. So, um, you know, we're in 3D space, so I have your basic, you know, camera tools, your basic uh, object rotation tools, et cetera. But the first thing I want to do is actually make this uniquely my own. I want to add some materials on this. 
So I'm going to open up the materials panel here. And as I mentioned, we have hundreds of materials that are uh, in the application, but you can always go to stock and search for more. Or you can search directly inside the application in your libraries panel. Julianne mentioned uh, the CC libraries panel that enables you to share all your assets across all your different machines or any location, as well as within your team. So this is a great place to search directly for stock content as well. OK. So um, I want to add a nice uh, maybe metal material to this. So I'm going to go ahead and select the object and add a material. So I've applied that metal material here. On the right-hand side here, we have a real-time render preview. If I expand it, what this does is gives me a, a great real-time render preview, essentially, of what my object is going to look like, the shadows, the light, before I actually have to render. This gives you the best sort of what you see is what you get experience while working with 3D. Traditionally, you have to actually kick off a render before you can see what happens. And we know people don't like that. So at any point in your workflow, you can expand that to see how things are going to look. All right, so I have my object here, and I applied a material. There's a bunch of properties I can change. Of course, I can you know, open up my color picker, change the base color of this. I can you know, make it a light source, make it glow, change the opacity. Some of the basic controls here, I can make it less metallic, so make it a little bit more matte. And then um, and I can um, edit any of these. So let, actually, what I'm going to do next is add a different uh, object here. I want to add a platform on this, so the sculpture is sitting on a platform. So I'm going to drop this here and just scale it down on the y-axis a bit. And then I'm going to pull this one up here. All right. So that's cool. And I actually want to use that same material that I applied um, on this infinity symbol and apply it to that object. Well, we make that really easy. We have the eyedropper tool. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. I can um, select the object that I want to change and then pick up my tool and select on any material. And you can see that material getting applied. Making, you know, copy paste of material is really easy across your object. Now, the next thing here is actually at the bottom. First of all, I got I to get rid of this uh, rose colored silver here. That was not the plan. So let's go back to uh, silver here. OK, so you can see these are linked. You got that re relationship, so both of them change. OK, so this particular plank that I brought in, um, if you can see on the right-hand side in the scene panel, this is similar to a layers panel that has all the items in my, my, my canvas. Um, this particular object is, in fact, one piece. So any changes I make to it applies to the entire piece. And this isn't always what you want, right? You want to be able to break them apart into different parts if you want to add a different material. So I actually wanted to actually add a different material to the edge of this plank. Typically really hard to do, but inside Project Felix, I can essentially just use the magic wand, and it's 3D aware. I can select different partitions of that object. So that's really cool. It's a magic wand, but it's 3D aware. I can affect the tolerance and things, things I'm familiar with from Photoshop. So I've selected out that piece, and we're actually using a lot of Adobe Sensei machine learning behind here to understand the object, the shape, the curves, symmetry, and using that to determine which areas are logical partitions that you would want to break apart the object into. So I have this. I separated out this edge piece. And um, let me add a material to this. Let's say concrete. And you can see it just gets applied to that piece that I've selected. OK. So let's talk a little bit about lighting. So you can see here, when I brought this object in, you can see clearly there's a light source, because you can actually see the object, and you can see some shadowing happening. What we're doing in the early re releases is actually focusing on enabling lights through image-based lights. So image-based lights are taking a background image, typically a, a high dynamic range 32-bit uh, image, and we're wrapping it around your scene. So imagine if this Infinity logo was sitting right here, and I had a picture, and I wrapped around it, and the picture was shining onto the strip. So all the lights, all the tones, all the colors are getting accurately reflected, making the object look, look like it belongs in that scene. So the image, by default, is right here on the right-hand side. You can see a small preview here that shows you white gives lights, black, no, no light. And the cool thing here is that you can actually create your own. So you can create like a photographic studio of softboxes, uh, different shadows and stuff to get the type of lights that you want. And of course, we have a bunch of presets that you can play around with. And they give you a pretty good variety of light sources. So I can drop this uh, studio scenario. Let's drop. Uh, umbrella, some a couple umbrella lights here. And again, you can see that image changing here. And these are the light sources that I'm using to light my image. Uh, I can do something crazy, like drop this Studio 80s horror light scene. And you can see that's the light sources that I'm adding. 
The light source intensity can be changed, and you can see the light being adjusted. The rotation can also be, um, you can also rotate that image, so you can see you can change the light source there. And again, lighting and shadows especially, you want to open up your render preview at any time to see, like, how is that going to look? You know, just a quick preview of what that's going to look like when it's going to be rendered and see what that lighting looks like. Okay. However, for this particular project, let's drop back that soft back. For this particular project, like as I mentioned earlier, I want this actually to be placed in a scene where it's going to be located. So I have this lovely image. If I can remember which library it's in. You guys should all recognize this. I have this lovely image, and I want to put this sculpture right here, this backdrop. So that's a nice photograph that I have, and I want this sculpture to be centered here, and that's great. So the first thing I want to do is actually match the object's perspective to the horizon line of the image, so it actually looks like it's sitting on the ground. It's, it's looking pretty good right here already, but we make this really easy by just clicking Align Camera to Image, and you can see that ground plane just sets to that horizon line in that 2D photograph in the background. And of course, I can make some changes if I need to adjust things or didn't quite find it right, that's fine. All right, the next thing I want to do is just uh, move this a little bit to the left. And let's just rotate it and get it center. OK. So let's put that right there. Now, now this is cool and all, but you can see the lighting is way off, right? We're using that lighting source that I showed you earlier here. Um, light, you can see that's the, the image, and that doesn't look quite right, you know, the image is, has yellow tones, the sun is setting, has this really nice uh, sunset there, and I really want to use the lights from this image and apply it to the scene. Well, we make that really easy, so I can come over here and just choose that background image, and I'll choose create light from image, and we're automatically going to convert that to an image-based light, as I've shown you, so that you get all the right reflections and the all right tone, making it look like that actually belongs there. And you can see this image here that's showing you a preview, that's the image that we actually generated from that 2D photograph. And same thing, I have some intensity controls, you know, I can adjust the rotation to just get exactly what I want. And the other thing that we're doing here is we're automatically detecting a sun. So if we detect that it's an outdoor image, we will automatically determine where the position of the sun is. And you can see that the shadow here is actually now accurately reflected by the sun and how the shadow would, uh, would lie. So I can uncheck and turn this on or turn this off, and if I can adjust the intensity of just that sunlight. It's essentially a, a single infinite light in your image. I can adjust the height of that sun, so although we've detected the location and the height, you can certainly make changes, and you can see that shadow um, adjusting as I change that. And of course, you can change the position of the sun, right? If I want the sun to be coming from the side, et cetera, you can see I can move that around. So those are the, some of the tools that we've added in the late, latest beta. Um, all of this is available for you right now. If you download, go to that application and download the latest version. I want to show you one thing that we're working on that's actually not in the build yet, but will be coming very soon to you. And that is the ability to add a um, label on this. And I realize that, hold on a second. Here we go. So I'm going to choose uh, the piece that I want. In fact, right now what I'm going to do is create a bookmark of this view, because I don't want to lose this view. So I'll set that as a default view. And that way, when I take up my, pick up my camera and rotate it around, um, I can always come back to this default view. So let's come over here and rotate this. I want to put a, a, a label on this um, and to show that this statue or this sculpture in, indeed is mine. So I'm going to choose this material. And then I'm going to pick up my decal tool, and I can choose any SVG, Illustrator, JPEG, PSD file, uh, PNG, of course, and then apply it, um, a, a label, onto any part of my object. And I can rotate it and scale it, and you can see I can reposition this and move this around to see how it's going to look on my ab actual object. So I'll reposition this. We haven't uh, added constrained scale yet, so pardon that, but I can position it the, the way I want. And then I have my logo, and now let's go back to my default view. Now I have my logo on there, and this is actually how it's going to look when we build this, put this out in this nice uh, waterfront. OK, now I'm ready to actually render this. I'm done here, and I want to go uh, and kick off a render. 
This is a design mode that I'm in right now, and this is where I do all my design work. If I want to actually kick off a render, I'll come over here to render, and I can start render. What rendering does is essentially uh, calculates for all the advanced lighting and all the shadows and reflections and refraction and all that, how that, all that works, the image-based light I created. A couple things about rendering is um, I can change the quality, of course. I set this to uh, low quality, and right now I'm going to um, Create, I can create a PSD or a PNG file. So the PSD will actually separate these into separate pieces so I can do more Photoshop work. And we're going to be expanding on this aspect too. Another important thing about rendering is at any point, I can actually save my render. So this actually finished, and that's fine. But at any point in the render, I can say save as if I want to see like a test render, and I don't want it to wait uh, for it to complete rendering. So I'll say save as, and let's call this Sydney. Make it, saves it to my desktop, show in Finder, let's drag that to Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, you can see this is the exact render here. I have my objects separate out into layers, I have my background layer, and I can do all the things I love and I'm familiar with inside of Photoshop. So that's the power of using Project Felix together with Photoshop. I'm really excited for you guys to try it out, so download it today. Share your uh, creations on Instagram, hashtag Project Felix, and um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you.